I'm back. Episode 12. This one is going to be really cool. I've got probably 10 pounds of metal, glass, and electronics sitting in front of me. And you are going to want to hear all about this $60,000 behemoth. Welcome to Home on the Range, the official podcast of 1881 Ranch, bringing you the latest on the products, topics, and techniques for the shooting, hunting, and adventure lifestyles. Here is your host, tactical deployment of small arms expert and 1881 Ranch Director, Will Egbert Jr. Hey everybody, it's Will back again with Home on the Ranch, or Home on the Range. I always want to say that backwards. I don't know. Home on the... I don't care anymore. This is episode 12, uh, and as I alluded to before, uh, I've got something really incredible sitting in front of me. Uh, A friend, a longtime confident, confidant, and uh, just an all-around great guy. I'm joined in the studio today with Murray from Megapixels, Megapixels Digital. What's up, dude? Hey, Will. Thanks for having me, buddy. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you came down. I'm glad you came down. So, okay, it's metal, it's glass, it's got a bunch of electronics in it, and it's a whole lot of money. It's 151 megapixels worth of awesomeness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if that doesn't give it away, we are sitting here with the brand new Phase 1 uh, IQ4 medium format on the XF body. Correct. This is a medium format digital camera. Uh, that has set all the standards. And I don't think there's anybody doing anything like this anymore. No, no competition whatsoever. Zero, right? So you guys have continued to set the bar and uh, at phase one, and this is just a, a, a massive piece of engineering. And that's what we're going to talk about. Cool. I always like talking about cameras. Well, I like talking about guns too, but cameras, eh, I guess, go. Yeah, guns cameras are okay. Are, yeah, right? <laughs> if you're into that kind of but thing. But this is really, like, <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. So uh, I don't even really know where to start with this thing. Uh, this, is, this is goofy. Okay. Um, there's, so much, there's so much that goes into this thing. It, it's, it, it, it's confusing. Um, all right. So if you don't know who Phase 1 is, it's a Danish. Correct. Danish it's, company. It's a Danish company, and they have concentrated on doing imaging, all sorts of imaging. Yeah, they started out, uh, oh, probably 25-ish years ago, um, and they started out with uh, scan backs. So like you'd see a flatbed scanner that people might have in their home office, kind mm-hmm. of an idea, but in a, a form factor that would fit onto a, uh, a 4 by 5 view camera, and that would scan across that image area and create a, a pr- really nice file. Uh, you know, and that's the start of a digital uh, in photography. Right. And then from there, of course, they, they also came out with the very first um, single shot camera, which, you know, in a medium format. And, uh, and that was a little six megapixel, you know, size of a 35 millimeter frame of film, uh, which was pretty small at the time. Well, six megapixels, but we remember, but we had to back up a minute. Okay. What year is that? Well, that was like 25 years ago. Yeah. Over 25 years ago now. Okay. So, yeah. That was, I that mean, was think a, about that was a couple we, days ago. All right. So this monster is 251. 151. 151. Yeah. And there's been a lot of changes in just megapixels outside of the the amount of megapixels. But if you go was, backwards 25 years, six megapixels and the type of file you got. I mean, at the time it was so cutting edge. It, you know, it was like you know little green men landing on the <laughs> landing on the surface. You know? and, and, and I mean, even a six megapixel camera, we still have a lot of those out in the field. People are still shooting them. Really? Uh, yeah, and the the files look fantastic. They still look better than uh, a, a DSLR does today. You know, Canon, mm-hmm. Nikon, whatnot. Well, it's um, medium format. Yeah, it, it's still it's a it, you know it's the same size as a full frame Canon, you know, Nikon, whatever, uh, whatever flavor you're shooting with. But it's uh, it's a different looking file. You know, mm-hmm. it's a much larger pixel uh, in those specific cameras. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was it was really a different look, totally different look, and still continues to this day to be a, a really sought after look. It, yeah, it is, if you haven't shot or seen the difference between a, I'm going to say a 35 or DSLR, right? Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen the difference between what's on film, mm-hmm. what's on a 10 or 12 megapixel DSLR, and I'm going to go backwards because that was, to me, 
everybody was still yapping about, no, oh, digital images are flat. And it, it, there were the people still hanging on to film, right? Oh, they, did, they didn't want to embrace technology. Mm -hmm. I looked at it right away, and that was my Nikon D2X. That was my first jump into digital outside of some, you know, BS Sony th stuff that wrote to a disc. And all right. it was all sorts of weird stuff. But, um, well, no, I had a, a, a four color a four color chip Sony that had this little like weird, it was like all lens and then had the, the, the sides, I can't remember the model, but it twist around and stuff like that. Right. And that created a massively cool file and mm -hmm. it was not flat. Right. It was a, it was a weird point and shoot camera, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a serious, you know, DSLR with the changing lenses and stuff like that. So that's where I jumped. I, I left film instantaneously and right. I jumped into digital and I don't know what anybody was talking about because what it would come out of my old D2X mm. at a 10 megapixel file was like way better than film. Yeah. So absolutely. if you've never seen what comes out of a 35 millimeter negative compared to a medium format film negative right. compared to a DSLR at let's say 10 or 12 megapixels, you know, back in what, 19, no, it's 2000, 2006, 2005, yeah, about 2005. And then you see a medium format image at that same time, which was what, around 25 or 40 megapixels at the time? Uh, at that time, it was, yeah, in that 30 to 40 range. Yeah, it was a 30, 40. Yeah. And you saw that image, it was, they were worlds apart. So even Absolutely. if from the 35 millimeter to the, you know, to the medium format film, mm -hmm. there was a huge jump, right? Just in yeah. the image. And then you take Absolutely. a DSLR versus the medium format at that same time, it was like a totally different file again. Mm -hmm. And it was very warm, very neutral, very flat. Because it was looking for post, right? Just like a negative. Mm -hmm. Like people don't realize that when you went into a dark room, that's all post production. Yeah, exactly the same thing. Just a lot of chemicals and no computer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> little yeah. dodge, little burn. You got your flashlight. You got your shade. You know, like yep. that stuff is there, right? So, Absolutely. let's jump forward, and now we're into digital backs, right? Correct. Yeah. So it is a, a true component camera. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, you have interchangeable lenses like you do on on the DSLRs. Uh, to take it a step further, there's interchangeable viewfinders as well. So it comes with the 90 degree standard prism. Right. Uh, but you can also get a waist level finder if you like to shoot low angle stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's pretty fun. That, that's cool because it yeah. brings you back to the real medium format times. Right. Yeah. Right? yeah. So yeah. my, my Mamiya 645 was like, you know, always had the waist level finder on it. I don't care yeah. what I was shooting. Yeah. I don't care if I had to shoot yeah. it upside down. I shot it with a waist level finder <laughs> like a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a bozo looking up in the sky, like doing something upside down. I'm like, no, right. I'll just flip it later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Because uh, you can. Because I could. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it looks way cooler if you were crouched down on the ground and looking through this prism with this little hood, and it just felt more like photography. Yeah. And then when you guys came back with that, you know, when, when medium format, mm -hmm. you know, stopped doing this myriad of like this hybrid point and shoot time, I want to look through a regular viewfinder. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't ever see a regular viewfinder on a medium format camera when growing up on film. Right. Yeah. So, and and that's the uh, the viewfinder on this thing is absolutely outstanding. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's all glass for one thing. So it's heavy. It, it has some weight to it. I won't, I won't lie. Uh, but it's a hundred percent viewfinder. So you see everything. It's super bright, super clear. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely wonderful. to Who's doing, who's doing the glass? Is that, um, you know, quite honestly, I don't know who makes the glass in the, in the viewfinders. Okay. Um, but it's, but it, the lenses are Schneider Kreuznach. They're German. Okay. So the, it's got a it's got a meat. I mean, I, I looked through there, you know, when you took this thing apart and it was like, mm -hmm. wow. So basically, if you don't know what a medium format camera is, you have a back, which would normally hold film. Right. Well, I can't even say normally. Like, yeah. Historically. <laughs> back his, in the day. Back in the day, you had this little bag, and you had to do everything by, you know, by feel. <laughs> right. um, so you, that would hold the film, mm -hmm. and that was that. And then you had the body and the trigger or the grip module. Mm -hmm. In some cases, the grip module would come off. And then you had the lens and the prism, or what right. you'd look through, you know, your viewfinder. Uh, and this is built identical. So you're yeah. not, you guys are continuing on with the legacy of a true component camera mm -hmm. versus, uh, can you even call them Hasselblad anymore? Because uh, I mean, it's owned by, it's owned by somebody else, right? Yeah, I it's, just got, it's a big drone company. Let, let's say that. All right, yeah. That's good. I got it. I got it. I knew <laughs> yeah. who that is. Uh, and, and, and they don't, they don't actually make their, their components any longer either. Well, so Hasselblad's not quite what a lot of people you know, they think of the moon they, thing, right? They it's think of cool. the old, the old, the old moon. The Super old moon. cool. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's it's no longer. Uh, yeah, that 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 company is a, a name. Mm -hmm. How's that? 
Well, so was Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> there you go. And I tell these young people what Abercrombie and Fitch was. was. <laughs> and they're like, what? No way. You're killing animals. I'm safari. Oh, yeah, yeah. Animals selling, you know, big bespoke wood tables and putting you on a steam liner for a month right. before you can get to the next continent. Yeah, that was that. Was that. But this is, really, this is really something wild because mm-hmm. I was watching a, um, uh, kind of an explanation on the sensor. Mm-hmm. And it used to be the whole big thing was that the sensor had bigger pixels, right? So there's yeah. the amount of pixels, which mm-hmm. people don't usually understand, right? So they, right. They, they just count pixels and they're like, oh, it's got to be better. It's got to have, it's got 50, but well, that's better than 30. Well, not necessarily because there's the depth of the pixel, right? The actual photo site, right? Is right. that what it's called? Yeah. The photo. Yeah. The, and generally the, the size of that yeah, pixel. Imagine itty bitty little tubes yeah. with, a, with a lens down at the bottom of them. Yeah. And then you've got the width the diameter of mm-hmm. that tube, which makes up the megapixel. Right. So in digital medium format, it's always been wider is better. Because it gave more dynamic range. Exactly. Right. And you created a, a wider area so you didn't introduce too much noise because that light bouncing off the sides of these mini little tubes right. going down to the electronics was not bumping into anything. Right. So this is highly technical. And I'm trying to like break it down for the... Break it down so that you can kind of, you know, like the 30,000-foot view. Yeah, but a little easier to chew on. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How do you know? You didn't eat an elephant? <laughs> One bite at a time. Right. <laughs> uh, <Jeez. laughs> but now I watch that the, the, the pixels are actually smaller because you guys flipped the sensor? Well, so previous sensors also had some very small pixel pitches, too. Mm-hmm. Um this one is a totally different sensor on the on the 150 megapixel, uh, the 100. I'll, I'll back up a little bit more. So the the smaller sensors that we were talking about that Phase One started with, those were all CCD sensors, um, which it, they had to have a, a really large pixel generally on those backs to create that dynamic range and, and give mm-hmm. you the, the look that people were after. Uh, once they started moving up into higher megapixel uh, sensors, uh, they were able to make the pixels smaller and smaller uh, as technology. You know, mm-hmm. became more available and, and, and just better technology in general. Uh, now, though, we've taken it to the point where we have CMOS sensors. So what, that's what's in virtually all DSLRs, mm-hmm. right? right. And so CMOS sensors uh, in the past uh, couldn't compete with color, couldn't compete with the dynamic range. There was a lot of, a lot of issues with, uh, with CMOS in its, uh, in its you know, infancy. Uh, so CCDs crushed them. Image mm-hmm. quality. Well, ones. because CCD, CCDs had been around for a lot longer than CMOS at that mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And, yeah, and and that's what they just—that's all they used in the professional equipment period. Um, now we've gotten into the CMOS technology has gotten so much better, and Phase One was integral, you know, working with different companies, mainly Sony, in uh, creating all these different sensors. And uh, so now the, the the CMOS sensors they offer a lot more for the the the, the usability of the equipment. CCD needs a lot of light. Mm-hmm. You know, you got you okay. to pour a bunch of light on there, whether it's continuous light or strobe. Mostly strobe is what pros use, but it's um, they had to have a lot of light to really perform. C- even even for video. Oh yeah, absolutely. even for video, absolutely. Right. So so CMOS technology why... has a lot more. Uh, it, it's a lot more forgiving. It gives mm-hmm. you uh, a, an incredible dynamic range. And now, so we're at 15 stops of dynamic range. You know, the, the difference between highlight and shadow, how much of that you can capture. Um, so it's it's. Yeah, we'll get to amazing. that in a second because that that's the real. That's the meat and taters. <laughs> yeah, that's the meat and taters, boy. That, that's you know, like, oh, this meat's starting to tain. You know, it's a little tainy. You know? <laughs> you no, you don't. Uh, that, that's what we'll get into that in a second. But that is what every true photographer or enthusiast. You know, if you're a pro or an enthusiast, that's what you're always chasing because yeah. that's the forgiveness. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's a, like you were saying a moment ago. It's not. It's not just about the megapixels. Um, even though my company name sounds like that's what we're all about, which, you know. Well, it's a term. It's yeah, an yeah. industry term for an actual item. You know, right. So inside that chip or that sensor is a megapixel. So yeah, yeah there's, that's, there's, a, there's a bunch. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. So. <laughs> yeah. 151. <laughs> well, how do I, you know, like, where's that one extra one to get squeezed in? Like, what was wrong? Like, what was wrong with the 150? It's an, it's an extra million. Why not? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> I, yeah, you got me. Don't don't, know, don't, don't leave it hanging out there. <laughs> yeah. Give the credit it's due. They jammed it on the sensor. They had to have one more. Yeah. But do we? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's cool. But um, they, these are semiconductors. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So this is not this is not like okay, we're just gonna you know layer a bunch of stuff on a on a silicon board and mm-hmm. hey, we're done. Right. What goes into actually making the sensor is a feat of 
of alien technology. It's, it's magic. It's magic. It's, magic, yeah. it's completely magic. Yeah. Like, and, so to, and you were you were asking about the the newer technology. So um, even in the CMOS world, which is not very old in medium format, I mean it's they're fairly recent yeah. uh, developments. Uh, this is a brand new CMOS sensor. This is a backside illuminated. You guys are always overachievers. Oh well, yeah, um, <laughs> because we can. Um, so the 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 problem with the older sensor technology uh, was that think of it like you were saying you're you know tubes, but we like to say maybe like a bucket. Think of the pixel yeah. as a bucket. So what happens when the light comes through your lens, goes through your shutter system and so forth? Uh, it then hits the sensor. It mm -hmm. goes through an IR cover filter. So right. knock down IR and UV light. So you can actually um, see color. Yeah, so you can see proper, you know, the, the visual mm -hmm. spectrum, the visible spectrum. And once it goes through that, it, um, it it then hits a lens, a micro lens, which focuses that photon down onto the pixel well. Mm -hmm. um, and on the old technology, it would then go through some uh, a bare filter, which is what adds the color. Technically, right. sensors are all black and white, just as a side note. Uh, so that bare filter. There you go, bending, <laughs> bending reality again. <laughs> again, it's magic. Come, uh, come back down, come back down. <laughs> so, so once it passes through that, uh, then it has to go past all the electronics that pull the data off of the sensor. Then it actually hits the, in, the actual pixel itself. Right. Okay, the photo cell. Now, so it's running through electronics before it ever actually gets recorded right and that so introduces noise, noise. yes <laughs> yes sir the n-word <laughs> <laughs> you went there uh so now i, could, I couldn't help it it was, it was right there yeah like this whole political lobbed correctness with that, yeah, lobbed <laughs> you it. took a hard so swing in the camera world when you say the n-word you're talking about noise because yeah. it's evil it's, it's, it's bad yes yeah. it's it's a bad one uh so on the new backside illuminated sensor same type of deal you've got micro lenses you've got your your bear filter then it goes into the pixel mm -hmm. and the electronics are on the bottom. Right. So what that does is it eliminates a lot of the noise, eliminates a lot of the heat from the sensor, which is what creates a lot of the noise as well. Right. Um, not just the electronics themselves. And what it also does is it keeps the, um, all of that stuff more compact. So on the older sensors, there was more distance between, you know, when the light actually hit that little micro lens, had to go buy all that stuff and the electronics and everything. It, it added more depth to the, to the pixel, right? Right. Uh, or to before you hit the pixel, that is. And so what that would do is it would uh, cause a color crossover issue, right? So, and that's something that in the past, people always had to profile the heck out of their cameras to be able to try and make the, the files look good. But when you profile, you know, profiling is wrong. Uh, but profiling, <laughs> it's... What? So profiling, it's... it's uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things, we, you know, if you've got a lot of stuff going on in, in the scene let's say that you're photographing maybe you've got a, a yellow car and a woman in a red dress and you know she's wearing blue shoes I, that's probably a faux pas but anyway uh and you've got green grass you've got blue sky cl puffy clouds and whatnot when you profile for that you're probably able to profile for a couple of things really accurately but then it screws up other stuff right because a profile can't fix it all in one shot so you have to fix it in post mm -hmm. all right with the uh backside illuminated sensor because it doesn't have to go through the, the electronics and so forth that light is directed into the pixel. There's no spillover into the next pixel because each pixel is going to have just one color, either red, green, or blue, right? That's yeah, I don't think anyone is. really. Uh, well, yeah, t techies, techies yeah. in the in the film uh, in the camera hobby thing, they're going to understand that there's a red pixel even on your TV. Yeah. There's a red pixel, a green pixel, and a blue pixel. Yeah, put a magnifying glass at your TV. Take yeah. a look. It's you'll pretty see, cool. You'll see it. And then there's a four color chip, right? So they introduce a second green channel. Yeah, because green is a weak. Channel. Right. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. It gets absorbed pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And those of us with, you know, history and night vision devices and aviation, that's why they use green in aviation and instruments mostly is because it, it's the easiest on the eye because it is the weakest. Right. There so, um, yeah. All right. So it's, it's coming down. It's not hitting any electronics anymore. Right. So now the backside and Lau was saying from phase one is that that allows a lot more compactness, like what you just said, mm -hmm. for them to jam in. <laughs> more, yeah, pixels. <laughs> more, more pixels or you know more software more yeah. electronics and yeah. now you can really have some fun with the with the sensor yeah yeah absolutely i was uh, and somebody sat around and to hear lao talk about it you know with his with his accent is kind of funny you know it almost reminds <laughs> me of somebody else we know but uh and <laughs> he goes yeah somebody was sitting around and you know they say oh just flip it over and grind it off <laughs> uh, and they're like, can we do that? <laughs> and they're like, well, I don't know. Let's try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Won't know unless you try it. Exactly. And so go. basically they, they take the, they, you guys 
do it, turn it over, you, you make the sensor, you turn it over, and you basically shave off the back side, and you've got the pixels there. And that's where everything's coming in. So ultimately, way watered down explanation, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. So there again, we're, you're not coming in from the front. Oh, I can't do it with that. There it goes. <laughs> I, I stopped myself. <laughs> Thank you. you. Can't, yeah, you can't come in from like, say, you know, like a one side of the sensor. Traditionally, everyone's using, you know, the front side. I, mm -hmm. I can't. There's no way to describe that. Yeah. Well, it, you it, turn it around and the back side is now the front side. Well, it's just that you're, it's kind of a weird uh, name for it, I guess, in my opinion. It, it, it really just means the, the, the big thing. I mean, it's, it's the front of the sensor is still where the light comes in regardless, but you just don't have those electronics in the way they're on the back side of it. But they call it backside illuminated. Um, you know, I, I'm, not, I, I I'm not a wicked tech. Yeah, I'm not, no, I'm not I a can't understand it. <laughs> I can't understand it. I yeah. push the button. But it magic. works really good. Yeah, I push the button. <laughs> magic happens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All the little Danes make this really cool image. That's how it works. There's 151 million Danes in that back. <laughs> One hundred fifty one. <laughs> one. Um, and, the, and it's funny because the in, let's start let's talk about the dynamic range mm -hmm. in even your eye. How many how many stops of dynamic range does your eyeball have? Oh, look it up. It's a lot. Is it? Yeah. It, it's still it's uh, it's still it only, less. I thought it was only like twenty. Yeah. It, it's it's but that, that is a lot. I mean, keep in mind back in film days, right? Film was four on slide film, four stops, yeah. uh, like seven on or on a negative film yeah so you know not very good at all and the first a lot of the first digital backs that came out the smaller ccds they were you know in that nine stop range yeah, look at this now we're at 15. Was i just googled 20? it and coming from wolf crow uh optoglass dynamic range of the human eye 20 stops wow you are good i mean it just seems right i don't know why like remember i've played with the camera for how many years now yeah so I know what it's doing, and if that's what it's doing, and it's what twenty four stops, twenty three, twenty four stops, and it's getting stuff that I can't handle in my you know, like I I didn't see the detail in there with my naked eye. Right. It's not because I'm blind; it's just because my eye can only do so much. So yeah. you're seeing more than the eye can actually see. Yeah. So it's fifteen stops of true dynamic range latitude, if you will, mm -hmm. on the sensor. But once you bring that file into Capture One, which is our software back up a little bit there i guess right so capture one software uh which is the leading uh, raw processing software in the, in the world and you can process any raw file pretty much yeah uh, you know uh, there's a couple of cameras that they still don't process for yeah you know that one that was on the moon that uh, that I forget the name of that company but, yeah, but anyways, they had they had their own so yeah but it you want to go over there and wasn't very good no anyways <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not playing the punches. Those poor, there, those poor guys have gotten beat on ever since that reintroduction of the, the uh, of the what the H two or what was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel bad. I feel bad for them. They, not like they didn't put up a good fight though. No, no. I mean, it, competition's good. Uh, unfortunately, they aren't competing that much anymore. Yeah, yeah. So it is what it is. But so fifteen stops, true latitude. Once you bring in capture one, man, you can you can pull up so much more out of the shadows, out of the highlights than than what yeah. you could on any other camera. Period. Right. So if, if you uh, if you know a little bit about photography, there's a histogram. And the histogram on the left is your darks, and the histogram on your right is the lights, you right. know, is, your, is your highlights, highlights and shadows. Well, when you see that curve, and the curve is all the way over to the left, and there's a flat line at the bottom on the right, that means most of your image is dark, mm -hmm. uh, and vice versa. If most of that curve is on the right half, most of your image is going to be white or lost. And there's clipping within, right at the sides, right? So you try and keep your histogram in the middle. And it's not always accurate. It's not always able to be done. Yeah, and, and I mean, there's different trains of thought when it comes to, you know. Well, I'm talking about one should. about one one image, right? Not, not yeah. bracketing for exposure or anything like that. Getting, sure. Not getting tricky. But, but. but you'll get, you know, a lot of landscape photographers uh, go by the uh, expose right rule, they call it. So they expose. They, they want to bring that toe of the highlight as close to the right side yeah. without going beyond. So right. it doesn't clip it off. Well, because they want, want information in the bright. And right. And there's technically on a sensor, um, two thirds of your, of your image quality, the data resides in the top one third of your histogram in the highlight area. Really? Only one third is in the bottom and why two didn't thirds. I, and why didn't I know that? Well, you should. You do now. I do. See? So I know it. I know that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend I knew it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it's it, to my knowledge and my experience over the years, right? It was always that was the most critical point to gate to to gain data out of, right? Yeah. Because 
once it's gone, you can't recover it. It was never there. Right. It, it was never recorded. All you have is just pure white. And that yep. makes your puffy clouds flat. Yeah. So when people say, oh, digital images are flat, I said, well, yeah, I guess they could be flat, but so could your film camera. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, I, put, I go over three, three stops or put three points of, you know, you know, exposure on it and bang, it's, it's white as a ghost. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I didn't, I didn't realize that. So, all right. So we want to go just slightly to the right mm-hmm. and develop for that. Yep. But when you go into post-processing, 15 stops is from where? Your middle? Yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's fifteen it's the, stops for the entire the entire thing, right? So yeah. you've got f- what six, seven from the middle going into the darks. There's a quite a bit of information left over in there. Oh yeah, there's tons. So mm-hmm. I mean, you can you can manipulate the image. Like I don't want to say manipulate. That's a bad word. You can expose the image, right? Because people think like, oh, digital. You're just you're manipulating. It. No, it, the information's there, and it's no different than dodge and burn. And most of us that were on most of these big adventure workshops over the years and that, we'd do a little bit of contrast and work maybe with under 10 points of saturation. Mm-hmm. And then most of our stuff was all dodge and burn. Yep. And just lightening up some of those dark areas, crushing a little bit of those shadows to kind of get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of that uh, contour. And that was that. Yeah. And But this thing is... <laughs> Scary. Yeah. It's <laughs> scary. scary good. Yeah. Well, that, what were we shooting with? IQ, what, 80s? Those are probably 80 megapixel at that time. All right. So 80 yeah. megapixels, that was, for this per- specific uh, instance, we were at the Bean in Chicago. Mm-hmm. I was shooting south on an 80 millimeter lens, no zoom, and I was shooting over a mile. And, and that's the normal lens on these cameras, just yeah. to back 80, up a little bit. Yeah, it's good. equivalent to a 50 on a DSLR. Yeah. Good, good point. So 80 on a medium format is 50 on a, a DSLR. Right, so I just hit the button, and I was recording, uh, or I recorded an image on a high-rise condo unit outside of Soldier's Field, so it's about a mile away. And I was able to get up to the 30th floor, zoom in to 200%. I still had a pretty crisp image. Mm-hmm. And then I hit the gamma slider, and I opened up the darks. Because all you saw was a black window, or a bluish-black window. Right. I opened it up, and I could see what that person had inside their condo. Literally, like I could be will. I mean, oh yeah, oh it's. But if you are a professional pervert, all right, (laughs) this is the camera. This is not a. This is not a. uh, uh, This is not for the uh, uh, what uh, peeping tom. No, this is this is full on blown CIA. I'm going to (laughs) stalk you. I'm going to stalk you. You almost went there. I almost did. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, But when I did that, it blew me away. That was what really set medium format digital apart. Right. From everything else, because you had to see it to understand that that dynamic range is sitting in the file. Yeah. That information is sitting there, even though you can't see it and you mm-hmm. can't understand it. You can zoom in 200 times and, uh, and or double your, double your, uh, your distance. Mm-hmm. And then you slide that over. And all of a sudden I could tell she had a, a green, well, I'm, this person had a green plant sitting on top of a white table and a cream colored couch. And I could count the cans in her ceiling from her mm-hmm. lighting. That was like, whoa! This is an industrial. This is an industrial product. Yeah, this yeah. is not it's a professional product. But I think it's beyond. I would say it's beyond professional. This yeah. is indu- when I say industrial, coming from the manufacturing side, right? There's a professional mm-hmm. mill and lathe. Yeah, and then there's the industrial grade, like the stuff that you buy that just churns stuff out, and it's it's the high end of the high end. But yeah. you can kind of say it a bunch of different ways, but it's the Ferrari of cameras. Whew. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy, and I haven't got yet to play with this one but we're going to do that later today but it is this thing is a beast and it looks nice and modern now it yeah, used to a, look it's a new industrial design it was, you know it's more squared off edges mm-hmm. and oh, i like that you know. that ch- that that this chamfered edge from the front coming to the back that mm-hmm. drop yep. angle that's nice it's nice the grip's a little bigger now yeah <laughs> which is <laughs> which is nice with a 50 pound camp no i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> what do this thing's got to weigh like it's you know it's probably with that lens on there good Five, five pounds it's it's up there you want to it's normally a tripod mm-hmm. usage camera you know you a lot of people do handhold them i do yeah. uh fair, fairly often but you know it's medium format's a slower more methodical yeah this is not this is not meant for sports not, not really i mean i shoot a lot of sports i used to when my son was playing sports i'd shoot a lot of stuff with it yep. baseball football it can I, do it, was, it can it do it fun. but you're not but it's one get... shot one pass yeah. It's, it's not like you don't spray and pray. No. No. And you're not opening this up and getting 12, 15 shots a, a second out of it. No. This guy, it'll it'll crank out about a, a frame and a half 
a second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's not. Well, the electronic. You know, oh, God. This, there's so much to this thing. Oh, yeah. Because right, now I was just about to say, but with the electronic shutter. Oh, you, see, now you just you, yeah, you, you <laughs> let I the just, cat out of the <laughs> cat out of the <laughs> bag. <laughs> I opened up another rabbit hole. And so it's an industrial product. The sensor is overbuilt. The entire camera system is overbuilt. It's. It's meant to last a lifetime. Yeah, it really and, is. And, and it, it, it can, because you yeah. guys have got an upgrade program and all that other stuff. Yeah, it's killer. Um, but So you're, you're, you you brought up the shutters. You had to go you had to go there already. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's a very unique camera in mirror, that regard. The whole thing push now is mirrorless. Yeah, mirrorless is a, is a big thing. And so phase one's gone into that world as well, a little differently than what um, others have, you know, well, uh, because they're, they're still full, f- yeah. <laughs> because they can, uh, you know, full frame medium format sensor, 151 megapixels, and, and you can make it a mirrorless 151 megapixels, which is just crazy. You can do it. You can do it on this body. It's got a fry Sony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, you can do it on the XF. It it has three different shutters on this specific system. There's a, a leaf shutter, a lens shutter, if you like to call it that. Yeah, the shutter is actually inside the inside lens. Inside the lens, yeah. And that that allows you, when you are using strobes, to sync up to 1 1600th of a second. True sync. Not not that kind of fake sync that some of the flashes mm-hmm. do, you know, HSS stuff, the mm-hmm. high-speed stuff and whatever. That's all. It just, you know, strobes your flash really quickly, um, but you lose about a third of your power when you do that. This thing, it is actually, a, it's a leaf shutter. So the leaf shutters, uh, you know, professional camera will allow you again that 1600th of a, of a second sync speed so your flashes will still fire at 1600 in the past it used to be you couldn't go over about 125th of a second so mm-hmm. it allows you to you know in a in a bright sunny daylight situation if you've got enough strobe power you could make you know you could light your subject a car or person whatever with the strobe and make the background look like nighttime just by changing your shutter speed sure and it doesn't affect the exposure of what you did with the stroke yeah it's pretty cool it's, it's complicated for most people to understand because there's three different levels that you can play with yeah well there's well more, more. but <laughs> but there's three basic levels so once you master which one you give and take with mm-hmm. you can get almost anything out of it oh yeah it's uh, I mean, yeah, a lot of it becomes you know just workflow what, what you like to do with the thing and it'll do it all uh the the other one of the other shutters it's got a focal plane shutter which is what the dslrs have in them Right, right, and that one, if you were to use the focal plane shutter, it'll sync up to one one twenty fifth of a second. You go beyond that, and you'll start to see that dark line in your image, right? And it'll grow the the, the faster you set the shutter speed. That line will get bigger and bigger and bigger until it basically blacks out the entire image. Right. Then it's got the third shutter in in the IQ four backs um, and some of the older IQ threes, the hundred and and uh, uh, megapixel sensors. They all have uh, an electronic shutter as well, which has no moving parts. Uh, use live video to do your your focusing and um, and composition, and then you just touch the back. No noise, no sounds, no nothing. Just takes a photo. It's pretty amazing. It doesn't sync very well with strobe. It would have to be very you know a very long uh, flash duration, which is yeah. generally not something that people want. Um, so it it doesn't work well for that. It doesn't work very well for uh, moving. You know, if somebody's walking fairly briskly. Through right. a scene, and you took a photo with the electronic shutter, they'd look like they were leaning back, like the old "keep on trucking" <laughs> <laughs> old bumper sticker. It'd look like that. Uh, so a little weird, but but for you know landscapes or, or anything else where you don't need strobe and nothing's really moving, uh, you know, quickly, right? It's uh, unbelievable. It's a it's an amazing way to shoot. I love it. And it's got a really cool shutter sound. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very. I mean, cool. it's serious. Yeah. Right. And then uh, we mentioned, you know going into mirrorless they have another camera as well uh just recently released uh and that's called the xt and the xt is phase one uh, took the idea from a, a technical camera right so getting into a large format type idea and stuff and then the technical camera is like tilt uh, alpha shift. yeah a yeah. tilt shift camera yeah like in a you know there was a number of manufacturers that still make them of course uh alpha cambo arca swiss yada mm-hmm. yada um so they've got one now called the XT, but they are not calling it a tech camera. They're calling it a field camera. And people will walk around handheld, you know, do street photography with it. It's pretty cool. You just take the back off of your XF camera, mm-hmm. stick it onto this new XT field camera. Right. And now you've got rise and fall, shift left and right. So you can do stitching. It's, it's a really sweet, it's, it's small, cool. lightweight camera. I had one of those from Alpa that day in Chicago. And, yeah. yeah. But you had to egg. focus it manually. Right. But there was no, um, there was no like real viewfinder. No, none at all. I had a piece yeah. of glass sitting up there, a little tube on top of the thing, which was <laughs> kind of accurate. Kind but, of. Yeah, but there was no way to focus because it was just an in, independent tube. So you weren't right. looking through the sensor. 
Yeah. You weren't looking through the lens. You'd pretty much use hyperfocal and done. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, no, no, totally. not doing so, this. Most of the images came out fuzzy because they were just not in focus. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, another guy I know from Chicago, he was walking around, he had his laser rangefinder. Yeah. And he's like, Doo! and I'm like, mm. oh, you bastard. How did you, <laughs> what? Yeah. Is that made by Leica? Oh, you are a pimp. Because <laughs> everything on his point and shoot side was all Leica. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, he had to. But um, it's... It's really kind of cool that because a field camera is more what large format, right? I mean, that's what they yeah. would call it. Yeah, it back would, in the it, old days. It would the tech cameras and this field camera, of course, came from uh, you know back in the in the old days uh, when we were young young bucks. They, uh, you know, it would have been a full on view camera in those right, times, right? Yeah, and it you would put have been the hood over the top of you, right? And, yeah, super old school look, uh, and it's. You know, those were four by five inch or five by seven inch or eight by 10 inch. You know, right. sometimes even one larger, like 11, 14. But that's How do I turn the stuff. autofocus on? Oh, uh, sorry. It doesn't have. No, I'm kidding. Uh, right here on the one on that one. There you go. What did um, you use? Oh, the, yeah. the bottom ring. Yeah. Duh. It's still, it's still in the same spot. <laughs> <laughs> there, you don't, everyone doesn't understand. This is an iPhone. There's an iPhone interface, basically. Y yeah. <laughs> a pinch, swipe, zoom, touch on the top of this thing. And there's one on the back, which is the back. And right. it's, and there's hard buttons and there's menus that drop in from all different sides. And this thing is com completely crazy. So when I ask, I'm, I'm anticipating something coming through the back, you know, where it's, it's a, it's a digital switch now. Right. And then you're like, no, it's right here. <laughs> it's on the lens. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Don't be silly. <laughs> yeah. Dumb, dumb. <laughs> all right. So go ahead. What were you saying? <laughs> uh, so, it, you know, that was film days again, very large film. This sensor now on a medium format camera. So in a much smaller form factor and ease of use side of things, uh, is compete and actually, I would dare to say outperforming eight by 10 inch film, which is amazing. Uh, I'd have to say so. Yeah. Because the resolution, the, 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 resolution file size, no, the, the, the file size is just the native print size. Let's call it right. Yeah. So, but the resolution I think is, is way sharper. It's re Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Wow, this is goofy. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have to do a video here next month when the weather starts to break, and we'll we'll go we'll go through this, and it'll be out at the ranch all the time. Yeah, um, this will be kind of fun. But I mean, there is just so much packed into this thing. Now, you said this has got a Pro Photo slave built into it, a trigger slave. Yeah, so the air uh, it's a true full on air TTL, so it does TTL flash with any of their air based flash systems. So you know mm -hmm. all the little B tens, B twos, B ones. Uh, you know, all tens, they all work and so you don't, so you don't need, need anything, anything else on it yeah you don't, you don't need to put anything on the top and have that little dongle hanging off and right well, something cool. else to break all right so now this is running a different card though yeah yeah this the thing IQ4 is running is, like a mini card got two drive. cards now so it's got an xqd um and then on top of that it has a, a small sd card as well so the reason for for multiple cards for the most part it, this one can be used in four different manners if you like you can set it so it'll record a small jpeg uh, you know, like a thumbnail yeah. to that, that SD card. And you keep your raw file on the XQD, which is a much faster storage device. Yeah, that'll dump the buffer faster. Right. And it's got a massive buffer, by the way. Uh, so you're never going to hit it, well, which I mean, is super cool. I mean, for a size and weight, and you know, it should have a big buffer. <laughs> <laughs> Always got to bring it down you, to the gutter. All you, the way. All, all the way. way. Uh, <laughs> we hit bottom on that one. Yeah. Um, and and it's so so XQD card raw file. You could you could also shoot the uh, to the little SD as a, an overflow. So if your XQD fills up, it'll just automatically start writing those raw files to your right. SD card. Um, some people do that, uh, but you know the cards are big enough that it's not a big deal these days, right? You just get a bigger card and yeah, you go. storage right. is cheap. It was cheap yeah. ten years ago, and now it's frightfully cheap. Very cheap. No. Yeah. So uh, most people though use it as a an archive. So it'll back up your raw files. Oh, that's, that's nice. the mode that I generally will shoot it in. Okay. Um, which to me just makes more sense. And then the other one would be you could actually just shoot directly to an SD if you lost your XQD or something. It's going to be a little SD bit. card anywhere. Yeah. They, you know, they're, they're, they're grocery stores. For yeah, grocery of. stores, like you said. Uh, but you can, uh, it takes a little bit while. It's a little longer. I don't want to say, it's a little longer. So it doesn't take, it's not like, oh my God, we got to wait 30 <laughs> seconds. But it, you know, it's a, it's a bigger file going into a card that's not really designed to handle this type of, this amount of information. So yeah. it does take an extra second or two. Yeah. Um, it's, of course, it's got live view. Yeah. So, you know, you can, and you can zoom in on live view, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So it, you it, can focus at 200%. 
Can you? Yeah, it's oh, 200%. Yeah. yeah. So you It'll can zoom in 200% three. and really grab a pretty sharp focus back out and check your peaks, you know, your, your focus peaking. So, yeah. So this one has focus peaking. You, you, you threw it out there too. That's uh, that is a super cool feature. So it puts basically um, uh, an iridescent green colored um, Do I have mask. to use green? No, you can change it. So, oh. but it'll, yeah, so you, well, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> you, I don't like looking at green. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I want uh, to see red. <laughs> <laughs> I feel red today. And, and it's, uh, what that does is as you're focusing, you'll actually see that mask, that green color or whatever color you, you decide on, maybe, <laughs> maybe red. And it will, you'll see it move through your, your image area depending really on what's, cool. in, what's in focus yeah as it's focusing you'll see it like you know you focus closer you'll see it moving closer to right. you and you'll see where that that plane of focus the real plane of focus falls mm-hmm. it's pretty cool and then there's something else too right there's there we can change that for peaking on the on the histogram too right we can set highs and lows yeah well so you could uh, not not necessarily set a high and low so there, there are well, parameters, a, limits that you can set on the camera for shutter speed, aperture, right. know, that kind of stuff. But it'll give you um, warnings, right? Yeah. You, okay. you can get your highlight and shadow warnings and stuff. Like and that we can move too. those settings around. Yes. Move those values around. Right. All right. So if I want to stay 245 in my black. You highlight. Oh, you highlight. I yeah. want to say 245 in my highlight. That's where it's going to start to tell me like, okay. Yeah. So you're, you're about where you want to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I leave it. I leave it at zero and 255 because... I mean, I can see whether I've, I've over underexposed <laughs> on the histogram, right? So I, I don't need a warning. I guess yeah, I'm very old true. school. Very but, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that way I'm not, you know, it's not going to limit me either. So I, I don't I want gotcha. it. Okay. Like being limited, you know. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. That's cool. So what else, what else is in the back that, that really kind of sets this up, this apart, right? So it's, what are we tethering with now? This is an HDMI cable. Yeah, so the HDMI is going to allow you to, um, you know, put it up on a, a large screen TV if you like. So a lot of photographers without, while they're shooting without a ca- without a laptop or a can- oh, without right. a computer, you could be shooting to the card and just have an image come up there. So, uh, you know, as you're shooting, your client could see it. Kind of an idea if you wanted. Or right. some people will set it up. Uh, I know some food shooters who like to go ahead and food photographers. Sorry, we're not talking guns here. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So they they'll have it set up so that their stylist it's on set and facing the food while the stylist is moving it with a you know yeah. pair of tweezers or whatnot. You moving the the oh the, I want it right there. Hold it still. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And and now the photographer doesn't even have to be looking. That person is looking at the monitor and seeing exactly what it looks like from the camera angle, Good. which is pretty cool. Because when I used to do my food photography, with what little I did, and it was a little. You really need multiple hands for food photography. It's it's a tough. It's not gig. product photography. No, <laughs> you know no, it moves. It moves. It moves. And it, it, it gets soft really quick under the lights. It's gross. Like yeah. It's gross. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, not to mention you're using things that are not food to in, make it look cool. to make yeah. it look cool, right? So, uh, but I couldn't do it because I just keep bumping into the even the even the big studio stand. I'd still hit it with my foot and move it and be like, oh, ah, yeah. duh, duh, and you'd have this this <laughs> this fight back and forth to go. Figure out, did you move it enough? You've got to take another picture. Mm-hmm. Because what you see through the viewfinder is, I don't want to say flat, but it's, you know, it's it's not electric, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you see it on your computer screen. You're like, oh, I wanna, I'm not getting enough shadow. I want to pull that out a little bit, or I need mm-hmm. this or that. So that's kind of nice because it, there's no computer needed. So I can put this on the stand, and I can go through my capture and do whatever. Yep. Plug it right into a little monitor or, a, you know, a TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the output on it? Is it a 2K file? Um, you know, it's, it's actually a fairly small file. Okay. So it, you know, it's not going to be comparable to like a 4k or anything like that. I, right. I want to say it's like 1080. So well, that's not, perfect. That's perfectly fine. It's, it's, it's a very nice looking image. Yeah. And you can, if you People have turn their nose up at, you know, at, at 1080, you well, know, yeah, at, at a 2k image, right? Yeah. They're like, uh, it's not 4k. Yeah. I got to tell you, you turn on a Sony X, you know, uh, uh, an Xbox or something. Mm-hmm. And you turn that on with an eight, with a nice quality HDMI cable right to the TV. And it's like, whoa, when you see yeah. that thing turn on. Yeah. That's what this 2K, looks like. It's yeah. pretty nice. 2K is plenty. plenty. I mean, your plenty. eyeball doesn't, you know, doesn't need anything more. But it's um, got but a, a lot of people, if, well, not a lot do it, but you can, if you've got a, a device that will record an HDMI signal, you could record the live view and do video with that camera as well. It's not designed that way. That's not what they're trying to yeah, go but for. There's a little bit it. of a workaround. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. Uh, and then what's the other cable down here? Is that a USB-C? USB-C. All right. Yep. Well, that's the Native. future, right? Which yeah. we all just super got. Super fast. Super fast. We all just got used to the Thunderbolt 
you know, third generation of Thunderbolt, and now yeah. we're off again and to something else. I, I picked up my kid's Apple's iPad. Got to keep turning them out, buddy. <laughs> well, I, I picked up the uh, my kid's iPad the other day, and it's smaller than mine, so I didn't think much of it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I picked up the cable, and I went to put my charger in his lap, you know, or use his cable to charge my my iPad. Mm-hmm. And mine's a generation younger than his, right? So mine's still an iPad, which is they call it something else. What kind of device is that? Your phone and your iPad were a were like an ancillary device, and it's not a computer. No, yeah. the guys at the, the geniuses at Apple had a word for it. But at any rate, and I went to plug it in there, and it didn't work. And I was like, "What?" And I <laughs> caught myself before I started jamming it in there like a like a bozo, <laughs> right? And I'm like, hammer. <laughs> and I'm like, another new adapter? Yeah. Come on, stop it! I can't take it. And then I was at Apple the other day, and they explained to me why because the new iPads are computers, and USB C is for computer. Yeah, flat out, it's for moving data. It's not for charging and being fun and cute. Here, here's some photos and here's a backup. Yeah, it's it's meant to move some serious serious bandwidth. And there will be some pretty cool things coming out. I, uh, from what I understand, on the phase one side, when in a bit, in a cool, bit, which would be pretty neat. Uh, so yeah, USB <laughs> USB three. But there's another one that's kind of hidden under this little guy right here. Is that the? Is that the? It is it <gasps> an archaic port from the from the. <laughs> In the eighties, from I think it's from the twenties. <laughs> yeah, is it? Yeah. It's Ethernet, it, man. It's Ethernet. Yeah, you gotta have Ethernet. Yeah, sounds a little weird, right? So going backwards into a uh, old technology, but bear in mind, virtually every building in this world has Ethernet run through it everywhere. Right. And well, that brings me right into a network. Exactly. I'm hardwired into a network, so exactly. now I can push this across to any TV I want, anywhere in the world, anywhere. If you want. The, yeah, right over broadband. Yeah, right. Raw file and. Because it, Ethernet has, you can put power, power over Ethernet. Right. It'll power the entire camera. No batteries. What? I mean, you still keep the batteries in it just because that makes the connection, right? But you don't need to keep charging batteries. They're, you just wow, shoot. Oh, that's slick. So all studio right. photographers love it. Yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd be all over that. Yeah, because be that's, cool. that's pretty simple. It's nice. Got a little rubber boot there. Uh, but there's also, there's wireless in this. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't need any cables. You don't. You do not need cables. So yeah, you could uh, set it up and the raw file, this is the first back that can do it. You can actually go ahead and, and run your raw file over, A wireless. Uh, over, your, over your wireless network. It's really, really <laughs> freaking cool. That's awesome. It's a little slow. I, I'm not going to lie about that. It, you know, uh, 151 megapixels going That's over. That's a huge file. Yeah, you're going over There's Wi-Fi. A- it's, it's a little slower. It might take, you know. A few seconds to get it over there instead of instantaneously. All right, so we'll, tethered, but. I keep referring to things as a, as a huge file, right? Because we're talking about a raw image, mm-hmm. but everyone keeps thinking about a hundred and let's say a one hundred and fifty one megapixel JPEG. Mm-hmm. There's no information in it. When I say there's no information in it, what I'm trying to say is like, I'm going to try and do this over the podcast, right? Because without you know, f- fingers or visuals or anything like that, right? So if you can imagine taking that image and looking at it from the side, mm-hmm. okay, it's, let's say, it's a, it's an inch thick. Okay. And you've got a couple stops up and a couple stops down, and that's all the information you have. It's just an inch thick, you know, in, in, in thickness. And then you start talking about a raw file. Well, that raw file could be 10 inches thick. So it, it's kind of interesting how phase one does their raw files compared to other companies. Um, most raw files are actually pretty darn big. Mm-hmm. On a 151 megapixel back, it's a, approximately 150 megabytes. It's not that big. Once you process oh, really? that out through capture, yeah. When you, oh, okay. So that's one of it's. This, oh, this gets into that, that Danish magic tricky. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's an it's an amazing technology that they've they've come up with. Uh, everyone else, their files are much larger. Oh, huge raw files, massive. Yeah. So go so grab that Sony it. raw file at 50 <laughs> megapixels. Exactly. Oh, yeah, go, right. Yeah. And this so this um, that allows it to shoot much faster and and you know. All right. So doesn't hold, take up nearly as much space on your drives. And all right, the card you have in here, just to make that point. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. It's a 64. Gigabyte card, yeah. Well, that, that's pretty big. Yeah, uh, that's what they ship with. And, and there's bigger ones available. And course. that's the XQD card. When yeah. I turn this thing on, it could hold. Did I see fifty or did I see five hundred? Oh no, it's in the hundreds. Yeah. Let's say it takes a second to boot up. Yeah. I mean, we are talking about you know technology that. I mean, if you could jam this into a space shuttle. Uh, well, hey, you know, we talked to uh, Elon. I mean, yeah. you should stop yeah. smoking dope and, you know, start <laughs> figuring out how to cross-reference electronics so that he can yeah. actually put the put his Tesla on Mars. There you go. Uh, what the hell are they going to do with that car on Mars, man? 
Yep. I mean, but, come but, on. But if you can, why not? Well, why not give it moon tires? <laughs> Make it really cool. Yeah, take the doors off of it and put moon tires <laughs> be, on be it man. or something. So at least when it's there, you can use it. You know, yeah, like yeah. if you ever do find your ass, you know, on, on Mars. It could happen. You know, right? I mean, like, maybe if you're not, not driving a, a stock Tesla around. Come on. You could have at least waited a year and put the truck up there. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. What does this got here? Like, uh, what am I missing here? Oh, 556 images on that card. Yeah. And there might even be a couple on there already. I don't know. Well, I'm I know sure there's one. I went to the bathroom with it a few minutes ago. Oh, so, geez. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, I had to stitch that one together, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, it like is a millimeter lens. lens. Right. You for needed those a wide you. angle. <laughs> Actually, I should have got the macro for you. <laughs> so, for those of you listening to this, you don't understand the, the history that Murray and I have had over the years. Uh, our conversations go to go to the extreme sometimes, and it's it's all in good fun. But you know, it's uh, that's who that's who we are. We're we're little boys. Yeah. We're little boys with grown up toys. <laughs> um, but it's a. Uh, it, it's absolutely amazing because there's, there's 550 captures on that card. Right. So the file can't be that big. Right. So to your point, that's magic. Yeah. yeah. So you're talking about 151 megapixels. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. All right. So what's availability on this thing? Uh, they're available. You know, order one today. You'll have it within a week, generally. All right. Uh, so week turn Now, the new XT camera. That one's a little little further out. Well, yeah, but it's it, it's a just barely getting into production now, right? Correct. Yeah, it's it's brand new. Okay. Um, yeah, they're they're a little uh, little behind, a little back ordered. You, you know, you ordered one of those today, you'd probably have it in about a month. Okay. Yeah, you know, not horrible, but still. But when you buy this, you you've got the integral component of that camera, and that's the back. Right. So so most people who have who are buying an XT anyway, they're going to have an XF as well because they want something with that viewfinder and it mm-hmm. has a whole bunch of other really cool tools on there you mm-hmm. know aside from the pro photo air it's got you know um the digital back itself has automatic frame averaging built in which we can talk about that at some point too that could be a whole nother podcast uh but that one camera, i think we're gonna have to start so next month i'm yeah, gonna we'll try play. and get this in the video form so our podcast yeah. will be both audio as well as video very uh, nice because some of the stuff that we're talking about or getting into should really be it's cool to listen to in your car, but when you go home, you should probably, you know, like, hey, go to a minute, you know, four minute and 38 seconds and check out what we were talking about. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely do that. That'd be, that'd be great. And it, so on the camera, it has uh, focus stacking, mm. built in automatic focus stacking. So you basically pick, you know, your front, especially if you're shooting macro, you know, right? Tabletop guys love this thing. Shooting macro and, and you've got super shallow depth of field and you want everything in focus still, you focus, you know, using the dials, you focus on the front point that you want to start, your focus right. to start at, you focus on the rear using the dials, so, and then it automatically calculates how many shots it needs depending on the focal length of the lens you're right. using because that can change your depth of field uh, as well as what aperture you're shooting at, which of course is... Yeah, that is your depth of field rate. Right. So it'll then automatically just shoot those images. If you've got a strobe on there, it'll pop the strobe each time. It's really cool. And focus so in between. F- focus stacking, because I don't think many people know what that is. The best way I've ever seen it described is if you were going to take a macro image, like really close up of a fly. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is how Helicon sold me the, <laughs> yeah. the software back in the day was with a picture of a fly. And they focused on the front of the fly and the whole, the whole image, the eight by 10 image was just as basically the whole fly body filled the entire image. Right. right. So that's how close you are. And you could see all the little dots in his eye and yeah. you could see the all fur the between his eye, you know, his eyes and his little mouth and stuff like that. I mean, you could see it clear as bell. So that's a macro macro image, right? The yeah. true macro. But the rest of his body was so blown out, you couldn't see anything because it wasn't in focus. Right. Well, then they took the same image and they focus stacked it, which was what you take a, a picture at the front mm-hmm. and then you move back a, a half a millimeter, take another picture and another half a millimeter, take another picture. And it's basically that's what you're focusing on. So that focal plane is moving. Correct. All the way in back. between each frame. And in the old days for product photography, we would have to sit there and literally do the math you know, we would have to put marks on our lenses and stuff like that. A little piece mm-hmm. of tape, put a mark there, and then just kind of like, okay, here's a midpoint, and I'm going to put 20, 20 marks total. So I got 10 on the side, 10 on the side, plus my midpoint. And then you've got to, like, take multiple images. And you got to start yeah. from the back going forward, and then you dump that in the, pro, in the post. Um, and then you would sandwich those together with specialized software. Yeah. Um, but this camera is doing... The math does the math for you so and, you and set, then it automatically focuses itself in between each one of those shots so it calculates right. so you just hit the button and you you hit the timer button because you'd want timer on it right so you hit the timer button and it waits five seconds oh that's right it's got an accelerometer in there 
Yeah. Right. Well, so, I mean, all right. So you can, you can <laughs> man, we could do, we could go on all day yeah, about right, this crazy so. thing. Uh, but it, it the one seismograph it, that's built into that thing. So you let be, it calm down so there's no vibration. Yeah. And it just starts and it goes. Ch- ch- right. Ch- ch- and it'll take all those and it focuses itself, which is, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Right. Um, the autofocus on this now in what, uh, six years has like tripled. I mean, I just yeah, played with it a little bit. It's, it's respectable now. Like it used to be autofocus on a medium format camera was like doggish. It was a slumber very and slow. Tough. Yeah. This is very quick. I mean, we're not talking about, you know, mirrorless, you know, high burst, yeah. all that stuff, but uh this is really quick. But yeah, this, it locks in fast and it and it it will it has a focus assist light as well. It will literally focus on a white wash wall. I mean it's good. Pretty yeah. Pretty so it's it, it's got all the little pieces and parts that that you still need on a let's say i don't want to say a point and shoot camera but it gives it the ability to be used handheld in a normal environment just with a battery in the back a battery in the grip and go take some pictures yeah i mean phase one started out as a professional you know a camera for professionals right really, that's what it, that's what they're all about and that mm-hmm. was their main market now it, it's gotten to the point where they've got enough tools built into this camera that it's easy enough to use for for the average you know enthusiast yeah it's amazing definitely the uh the, but there's a seismograph in here yes sir. and i think we'll We'll wrap it up with that because this is this is kind of amazing. So there's a little tremor. Sound, there's accelerometers in the camera, mm-hmm. and it's sensing vibration. Yeah, even the smallest vibrations, yeah. you'll and see it, a spike. It, it's pretty it cool. Looks, yeah, it looks like a, an EKG right, at yeah. the bottom of the display, <laughs> and it tells you. And if you set that right, if you set it to trigger when the camera's still, you can just sit there and pound on the table or pound on your tripod, yeah. and the moment you stop and that seismograph comes down to the bottom, it'll automatically trigger. As soon as it flatlines. I mean, that is cool for, I mean, flat out, the only thing I could see that for for myself right now is landscape. Yeah, I mean, that's what it, it's fantastic for landscape. I mean, you can use it in, in any situation. The problem, you know, if you're shooting people, <laughs> yeah, I keep saying shooting things, you know. <laughs> You're it's a, a default. Guy. I don't. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't I, care. It doesn't right. matter. You're photographing people, <laughs> and uh, you know you're not you're not going to use it for that because you're not going to be able to control the moment that it happens. You know that that's right. just not going to work. Mm-hmm. So you have to maybe use strobe to keep vibration out of out of the equation right. and just use yeah. your strobe. But yeah, the like it, people don't realize that wind blowing on your tripod introduces noise. And I'm going to say noise because it's a blur, it's motion, it's yeah. vibration, it's all sorts of stuff. So, uh, I, I, you know, noise is not the right word, but, you know, it, it's it's blurring the image. Yeah. And then you wonder absolutely. why, whoa, this guy's image is really crisp. Mine's well, soft. Well, he waited till the wind stopped on his face before he pushed the shutter. Right. You know, so yeah. you kind of have to understand that everything, even something this large and this robust, is still going to have vibration. In, you know, sure. And the smaller the camera, the lighter the camera the more susceptible to vibration and and movement. So um, that's really cool. I mean, that would have, that would have saved a bunch of shots out in Monument Valley. Oh, I had to, the wind was just, the wind was there and you know, you're always bumping something and you don't realize that when you bump your tripod or you tap your tripod, it's still going. The magic number is seven seconds, seven, seven seconds for it to settle. And that, that goes for, if you're locking your mirror up too, right? That creates a vibration because that's a big mirror. But you lock it (laughs) down. It's a big mirror. <laughs> you lock up that, that mirror, and you should wait seven seconds before you shoot. That's solid that, that's palladium, kind of too, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the only camera with solid palladium. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know it was seven seconds. I always thought, like, you know, count to three or four and that. But, yeah, that, that, sounds, that, that sounds a little better. Yeah. But it, people don't usually understand that either. Because when that thing moves, it's like, Tung. there's a whole reason why mirror up is on a DSLR. Because a lot I, of people don't use it. Yeah, but they don't. Um, and that also has to do with you know shutter speed too. Like if you're sure. up at two one you know two fiftieth of a second, it, it's a moot point at that you yeah. know at that minute. But when you're down you know under a thirtieth of a second, massive difference. Huge, yeah. massive. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to sport about this? Uh, it's black. I like the little blue lens. It's <laughs> yeah. not painted anymore. It's yeah, natural. Those are the, the, the blue ring. The blue series. ring. So the Blue Ring series is it, uh, they're going to focus faster, more accurately. There's more uh, they call motor control units, but the actual steps that it's able to focus to it's, a lot smaller, it's much tighter. Yeah. Okay. So especially when you get into 150 it feels different. I mean, it feels different. Like I've got the motor engaged right now because it's on autofocus, and right. I'm hitting the manual ring on the lens, mm-hmm. and it's got a lot of drag. Yeah. Like I can feel it in there, and it's it's tight. Like I can mm-hmm. feel the little steps a little bit. You know, it's like I don't want to say gritty. Yeah, but what you're feeling are like those little steps in the, yeah. in the motor and the gears. 
Yep. And that's that's really nice. Yeah, that's it's it's beautiful. Oh, I can't wait to go play with it. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have some fun with this. Um, so um, workshops, experiences, all that kind of good stuff is coming down the pipe with us. Yeah, I mean, uh, we we try you. to put on uh, workshops whenever we can. I mean, we cover uh, a big chunk of the states for for phase one, and uh, so we're you know we're we're out all the time on the road. Uh, showing the camera system, doing, like you said, doing workshops. We just did one in Santa Fe with a, a great photographer out of uh, St. Louis, uh, Robert Boulevant, a little plug there. Uh, and um, yeah, it was, it's a lot of fun. Those, those type of workshops are great. Mm -hmm. And you know, you and I've been on workshops with phase one specifically in the past, which right. are always, uh, those are a blast. Um, but yeah, so we, we always have good laughs. It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's an eclectic group of people and it's, it's an adventure. It is. It is an adventure from the moment you get off the plane uh, everything is taken care of, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I don't know how much we're going to get into the, the remote stuff, but I, I think between you and I, I think there'll probably be a couple that are really remote where we have to keep people down, you know, like the class size to like eight, yeah, including you and I. For safety. <laughs> you know, for safety <laughs> and just for, you know, like we can't be driving vehicles, you know, like we're not going to get on, uh, you know, a Ford van. Yeah, with with ten guys in it, we're not going to drive across the tundra. <laughs> no, yeah, not so yeah. much. There was a, a couple of the guys. Um, from uh, from the UK and one from uh, one from China. Uh, I can't really talk about it right now, but we're bouncing around that Labrador trip, mm -hmm. um, and the kid's got a you know a billion followers out of China. But wow. he's he's a he's a fruitcake too. He's a lot of fun, and it's just his vernacular is it's just amazing to be around. Yeah, uh, very quick, very witty. Also, one hell of a little photographer, just because cool. he's been playing in the field his whole life. Right. Um, and another guy out of the UK that shoots a lot of fashion for Victoria's Secret and that type of thing. Um, but we're trying to document that trip that we're that we're doing up to Labrador, down to Newfoundland Island, and then back into the states, which is going to be a mess. I mean, Ryan and I talked about it a little bit, but we're in the planning stages because what we're talking about is driving someplace that you really. You know, shouldn't be there. You, yeah, no, <laughs> you shouldn't be there unless you have multiple vehicles and you have a way to leave the vehicle and keep going. And you have to pack extra fuel because you do need it. Yep. You know, this is like you know, road of bones and stuff like that. This is this is desolate, desolate land. But you can't get that landscape anywhere else. You know, exactly. You, you have to go someplace. So yeah, you want something to, special. You have to. Yeah, northern Canada around like caribou. When the caribou are migrating, that'd be an awesome adventure. Heck yeah! But that is wet and cold. And oh, sorry. We got a lot of Mac. We switch off if you. Oh, I didn't turn you off. Oh, thanks for, thanks for reminding me there, little right. little Dane. <laughs> <laughs> little Dane got snippy at me and said, "Fine, you don't You're have to shut here. me off. I turn off myself." <laughs> I think that was more. I think it was more Swedish. Wasn't I think it was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's, they'll get mad at that. Uh, <laughs> why can't he do a Danish accent? What's wrong with him? <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a there's a couple of those that we're going to work on, and you know, of course, we're gonna we're gonna have you there as well, and and phase, and it's just a it's a massive cool thing, and we're going to be doing these things out at the ranch too, heck, because yeah. we've got some pretty cool. Uh, we should do a fashion thing on that bridge. I mean, that bridge is from the 1800s or early 1900s, and when I get done rebuilding it, it's going to be cool. Yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> It's going to be really cool. And one of the other guys said, you know, to me, uh, to that point, they're like, you know, you should actually do some, like, you know, little photo signs. Like, from here, this is a good photo spot yeah, on the point, ranch. Point this way. Yeah, point this way, <laughs> and you'll see what I'm saying. Right, right. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Um, and I kind of brushed it off, and then it came up again and again and again. And I don't want to say, you know, I, I should have my stuff in galleries, but it's it's definitely – Pretty pretty stout stuff. So oh, yeah. I know what I'm looking at, and if I point you in the right direction, you you get a good you get a good shot. And then there's other yeah. guys that will bring in some pros that are way better than us, and you know they'll do the same thing. Yeah. Um, but having those little spots around there, so that's kind of something that we brought up on. You know, that we we're kind of digging around on. And then there's so many things in the Midwest that we can do day trips on, that are just Which awesome. And yeah. people don't you know they bring a card. Stick mm -hmm. it in the camera and und push the button. And <laughs> now that was German. <laughs> I mean, yeah, was yeah, totally, yeah, totally German. German. <laughs> I, I can't keep it straight, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I got bonked in the head. Uh, <laughs> Clearly. But I don't know. Uh, so they're available. Week, available. Week and, turnaround. You know, one of the really cool things about it, you know, it, it, this sounds like it's kind of a, a small thing, but it's a big thing, uh, especially on a professional piece of equipment. Uh, that has the best warranty in the industry. 
that is a five-year warranty, and phase one calls it their uptime assurance warranty. So if something goes wrong, uh, which doesn't happen, uh, but if something were to go wrong, uh, you contact us as your dealer, we send it into phase one, and they ship you one overnight to use while yours is in for repair. Even if you were to drop it, they'll still ship you a loaner. It's pretty darn cool. That is that, For five years, man. That That's unheard of. It is. That's unheard in of. In any industry. Now, the other cool thing is... Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to get this thing in the frame of this, taking a little selfie here with it. Yeah, you guys have to see Will right now. It's not not yeah, pretty. Not pretty. <laughs> um, but when you buy this thing, it's ready to go. It comes in a rolling case that fits in most air, you know, airline overhead bins. Yeah, it's a Pelican and, Pelican style case. Yeah, it's called Storm is the company. Okay, uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a shipping case. It is. Yeah, it's water it's heavy duty. Yep, and it and inside uh, there's a company called Naya Evo who makes the inserts for. For phase one, and they, you know, it's it's They're all, all zipper and padded and, and exactly. laser cut. Yeah, you and can so it a, holds the gear, and you know, can you fit a laptop in it? Yeah, so the top it has a little tray that folds down, yes. uh, a little hard tray. Yeah, yes. so you put your up to a fifteen inch laptop up in there, yes. and it has little sides on it and a hood, and yeah. Pretty so cool. in in the old days, we'd have to build those ourselves with you know third party pieces and parts and you know yeah. different things and we had to glue them in there and sometimes the glue wouldn't hold and yep. you you get someplace after being kind of rough with your equipment your box and you get there and you open it up and boom you know, all that stuff falls out <laughs> your laptop <laughs> falls out right under the rocks and you're like oh i want my brand new apple <laughs> God, yeah but that's kind of a to me that's a really good selling point because yeah. the camera's contained self-contained it has all of its own equipment it's got its chargers, its cables, it's this, it's that. All the batteries, it, everything all the batteries, ready to go. And it's all Cards. padded, it's, it's protected, and it's not. they're not shipping it to you in a, in a cardboard box and saying, all right, good luck, go put it in the case that you want. Oh, by the way, you've got to put in another five or $600 yep. to go get yourself a case, the internals, and all your spare parts. Right. Um, that, that's really cool. Yep. I, I, to me, that, that was what always sold weapon systems to me. Mm -hmm. Like the PSG one, it was just like, you opened up this case and you're like, it had a leather handle with padding because the thing was so heavy. And yet you opened it up and everything was laser cut, uh, laser cut foam at that point, but you know, all cut foam. And it was like, whoa, this is yeah. ready to go. Yeah. You put a few it's boxes a around, you know, ammunition in there. And I, I like it because it's compartmentalized. People have busy lives. It's a lives. nice presentation. You open it's that nice thing up and it's, and it, it's usable. The yeah. way it ships, it's not like it you varies. have to just yeah. chuck everything out. Yeah, there is that. You know, people like uh, you know, like they sell you something and it comes in this cool box, but there's cardboard boxes inside the shipping case, and it's like, yeah, yeah. no, this is actually finished. Everything yeah. about this camera is is finished. This is a this is a true system. This is a true platform that you use for doing a lot of different things. And if you all you're going to do is take landscape photos with it, you are going to be absolutely blown away at what you can produce with this. Yeah. With very little heavy lifting in post. Mm -hmm. um, and you get phase one capture, uh, capture one yep. software, correct? Um, which is if no one has played with it, even if you don't buy this camera, go get yourself, you know, capture one because yeah. it is just by far it. I think it blows Photoshop out of the water and Lightroom. Oh, yeah. I mean, Lightroom's got a great engine. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. It's you know, but you're talking about apples and bananas. Yeah, there you go. You know? Yeah, it is the raw processing software pros use. I mean, yeah. it, that is the one. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Well, okay. Uh, what's what's retail on the 80 millimeter kit? Uh, well, it, so that's the cool thing. Um, it used to be that it came with the 80 millimeter, just like DSLRs all, always come with the 50, right? Or they okay. used to in the, back in the day. Now phase one has allowed, uh, when you buy it in a kit, yeah. to get your lens of choice. And oh. they didn't change the price. So, you know, an 80 millimeter lens is always the least expensive, right? It's right. the middle of the road lens. It's a $3,300 lens. So uh, they benchmarked you, the price and let you choose your lens. Right. So you could take, you know, maybe a 150 millimeter, which is a great portrait lens, the, the 2.8. That's, you know, that's a $7,000 lens. You could get that lens instead of the 80 in the kit. And the price is still 51990 so 52 k Nice. Well, oh, I like that. Yeah. What about zoom lens? Uh, there are two zooms. Technically, it's just the primes that you can get in the kit. Okay. But All yeah. Right. Um, but there's but two it, zooms, 40 to 80 and a 75 to 150. All right. So what's the next step up from the 80 millimeter? Uh, focal length wise? Yeah. Uh, 110. All right. And 110 is equal to what? About a 80, uh, 75? Probably closer to 75, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you have 50, yeah. 75. All right. And then, and then so the, I'll just run through the lenses since you brought it up. Uh, there's, there is a 28, but it's a... Uh, it, it's not sharp enough in the corners, uh, especially for 150 megapixels. So uh, we don't generally sell that lens any longer. Um, so there's a 35, okay, 45, 55, 80, 
110, 150 f3.5, 150 f2.8. There's also a 120 macro and the two zooms, the 40 to 80, 75 to 150, and a 2x converter if you want to get crazy. And then on the long end, they have a, a focal fixed focal length 240 millimeter. So what's the, um, what is this guy here? It's 80. It's a, all right. So it's a, it's a 2880 that's on yep. this camera. And you can put a 2x. 2x adapter on it, right? Nah, so the 2x, uh, because of the design of those type of converters, the front element on a 2x converter actually extends past the mount. So if the mount of your uh, lens, if that rear element is close to, to the, there, uh, you can't the you can't put it on. Okay. So basically, it's designed for longer lenses, like uh, the 150 and the 240. Okay, really I got you. All right. On. So stick with the stick with your primes. Don't try and punk it out. <laughs> you know, wait till you get up to the top and try to squeeze a little bit more out. And they, <laughs> <laughs> get closer. Yeah, get closer. <laughs> um, cool. Case, availability, price, Technic specs. Uh, it's 151 megapixels. It runs for a couple hours if you're judicious with your live view. Yeah. Um, it's got four batteries in the case. Uh, we can put it on anything. You can plug it up to anything. It's got wireless. Um, you will be a baller when you pull this out. <laughs> People take notice. Yeah. yeah. This is this is definitely this 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 screams that you're an aficionado. That you you know that you take passion in your passion in your um in your hobby or or your you know your love mm -hmm. and it's just it's an amazing piece of kit this is no this is no joke somebody needs to go see it or where can they see one uh well i mean you can check it out on our website mm -hmm. um megapixelsdigital.com um and you can you know you could also obviously check it out at phase1.com but right. uh if you want to see one in person uh you can contact me and we there's many ways that we can do it but uh yeah we we get it in your hands so you can shoot with it we can invite right. you to an event or we so can how do they get, how are they gonna get in touch with you uh they can reach me uh my email is murray at megapixelsdigital.com so nice and long uh which, which is always <laughs> painful for everybody uh but it's uh i'll, I'll spell it out what the heck it's m-u-r-r-a-y at murray murray <laughs> <laughs> that's just what will calls me uh and so murray at M E G A P I X E L S D I G I T A L dot com. Yeah. Very good. I think All right. Spelled it right. And then if you're in the Midwest and you're probably listening to this podcast, you're most likely in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably going to have what four four touchy feely events a year? Two? Uh, probably more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we, you know, we we do events all over. Uh, so I, I'm I'm actually based in Traverse City, Michigan now, but you know, I, I get to Chicago Land and to St. Louis quite a bit. I'll just drive to those. Um, but yeah, we cover pretty much everything from, you know, Michigan down to Louisiana and across to, you know, we, the only states we don't touch on the West Coast are uh, California, Oregon, and Washington. I don't know why you want to touch those anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, Washington is... I, I feel bad because Washington is such a beautiful state. Oregon oh, yeah. is too, right? Northern oh, yeah. California, Oregon, Washington. It's so gorgeous and it's so, the people there outweigh, you know, the crazies, but the crazies rule. I, there, I there are a lot of crazies, yeah. I, I don't get it, happen. but... Uh, that's someplace you and I were talking about earlier that, mm -hmm. uh, that whole Washington state trip, oh, the Olympic peninsula. Yeah, exactly. We got to call art. I haven't talked to art in probably 10 years. Yeah. I haven't seen him forever. Um, cool. So we'll do some events. We'll do some touchy feelies. Um, we got to get over to like Ferrari dealer with a couple strobes or something. There you I mean, go. The Aston Martin, I think has got a pretty cool interior as well. Yeah. A yeah. I shot, I shot, I don't uh, say refined. We shot Aston more. Martin's, uh, we did an event in, um, in Minneapolis, and we shot some Aston Martins there. Oh, good. They, they are cool. They are very cool. They've got, I think, the best sound. Yeah, well, they, they're sweet. Yeah, the V12 Aston is just, yeah. I, I don't know, it just got that sound. I know the English should make a beautiful race car, a mm -hmm. lousy vehicle, but a beautiful race car. Need, need a lot of repairs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's cool. Exactly. Yeah. But nothing goes wrong in a Ferrari, right? No, 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 no never. No, no, never, never. Yeah. Cool. All right. So everyone's got your contact information. You know who I am. You know where to reach a hold of me. Uh, membership at 1881ranch.com. Uh, if you want to reach Murray, that's uh, over there at Murray at Megapixels Digital. Uh, you got a phone number? I sure do. 631-935-3389. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, until next time. Uh, yeah. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to another installment of Home on the Range. Remember, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Till next time, stay wild and true to your heart.